Hey Warriors, I'm Laura and I'm on a journey to lose 200 pounds because I have no social life. Welcome to part two of my impromptu mental health tell-all. In part one of this video, I talked about my diagnosis of high-functioning depression, what that means, and what it looks like for me personally. And I will try to remember to put a link in the description box down below where a card appears somewhere, hopefully, if my brain is working when I edit this. And in part two of this special mental health tell-all, I'm going to be attempting to answer probably the most common question I have gotten since I started my channel six months ago, and that is, when do I table my weight loss journey and weight loss attempts and just focus on mental health? As always, just a quick disclaimer that everything that I am about to say is based on my own personal lived experience with mental health, as well as my experience as a therapist, but it's based on generalized knowledge because even though I am a therapist, I am not your therapist, which means I don't know you, I don't know your diagnosis, your symptoms, your mental health history, or anything else that I would need to know in order to give advice tailored to you individually. So please just take everything that I say with a huge heaping bucket of salt, and if you need to seek professional mental health services, please do so. So, when should you table weight loss and focus solely on mental health? Well, the short answer is, it depends. If a client came into my office struggling with symptoms that caused a severe disturbance in their mood and level of functioning, and by level of functioning, I mean their ability to participate fully across life domains, things like school, work, health, relationships, personal hygiene, et cetera, et cetera, and or is reporting symptoms that are a potential safety risk for themselves or others, then I would probably support them in tabling weight loss completely for a little while and focusing on mental health. Well, I mean, I'd support them no matter what, because personally, I believe that therapy should be a more client driven process, but you get my drift. Now here's the caveat. As a therapist, the evidence-based treatment that I use most often is something known as cognitive behavioral therapy, which focuses on changing and challenging unhelpful cognitive distortions and behaviors, as well as improving emotional regulation and building individualized coping mechanisms. And for those of you who have watched my videos on the cognitive triangle, that probably sounds extremely familiar. But for those of you who have not had the joy and privilege of watching those videos, just a quick recap. So the cognitive triangle is a visual representation of the reciprocal relationship and connection between our thoughts, behaviors, and emotions, and how changing our thoughts or behaviors, because they're the, those are the only ones that we have control over, can negatively or positively affect the others, i.e. cause a negative or a positive change. So for example, if I'm having thoughts along the line of, I suck at life, okay? I'm a horrible human being. Um, and that causes emotions like sadness, anger, frustration, guilt, etc. cetera. Um, which then leads to behaviors like, for me, it would probably be something like binging. I'll just put that out there. You can see, you know, you have the thought, I suck at life, I'm a horrible human being, causes these emotions of sadness, anger, frustration, which then leads to a negative coping mechanism like binging. And then because you have, you know, participated in that negative coping mechanism of binging, then you're just going to have more negative thoughts and emotions, which just leads to more negative behaviors. You see what I'm saying? It's just a nasty cycle. So with the cognitive triangle, what we're trying to look at is how can I change up my behavior of binging and or my thoughts of I suck at life and I'm a horrible human being 
in order to break that cycle. So you can do that one of two ways. Either one, you could start with a thought of I'm a horrible human being, I suck at life, and you can challenge it and use cognitive restructuring or cognitive coping skills in order to do so, which if you are able to do that, then that's going to affect the emotions and behaviors that then result from that cycle. Um, Or if you don't catch the thoughts or you can't change the thoughts, then changing up the behavior. So yes, I'm having these thoughts. I'm having these emotions that are being caused by these thoughts and I want to binge, but I know that if I binge, it's just going to go back around again, right? So what can I do instead of binging? Well, I can go for a walk or whatever else. And cognitive behavioral therapy has been found to be really effective for a whole host of different mental health disorders like anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, Um, substance use, eating disorders, and the list goes on and on. And as a therapist, one of the first things that I do with a new client is start with behavioral activation, which is basically just helping the client to engage more in mood boosting activities in order to positively impact their emotions, thoughts, and behaviors, i.e. break that cycle. Inject it with a little bit of mood boostiness. (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> because what happens often is when we are coping with mental health symptoms, such as the ones that result from depression, for example, the coping skills that we tend to gravitate towards and employ first are what we would consider mood directed behavior, i.e., I feel sad, so I am drawn to do sad things like sleeping, listening to sad music, isolating all that jazz. And those types of mood directed behaviors only serve to make our thoughts and emotions worse. And if we go back to the cognitive triangle, doing those types of behaviors is just going to do what? It's just going to cause the cycle to start all over again. So with behavioral activation, what we are trying to do is break that cycle by again, injecting that cognitive triangle with some goal directed mood boosting behaviors, i.e. I feel sad, but my goal is to feel better. So I am going to do something that creates the opposite emotion of sadness, like dancing or listening to BTS's Dynamite. Anyways, you may be wondering like why I'm telling you all this and what it has to do with weight loss and I don't know, just kidding. So when I'm doing therapy, there's four main categories of behavioral activation that I tend to focus on with my clients. Number one being fun and hobbies. Yes, there is a reason that I allow myself to indulge in all of my guilty pleasures from Disney to BTS because they bring me joy. Two, relationships and socializing. Three, setting and meeting goals. And four, mental and physical health. And here's the interesting thing. The steps that we take or should take in order to successfully meet our weight loss or health and fitness goals, such as eating a healthier diet full of healthy fats, carbs, and proteins, getting regular exercise, drinking water, improving our sleep, managing stress, And bonus point, if you have a network of people that you talk to or even better are on the weight loss journey with you, all of those things can be considered to be part of behavioral activation because they work to improve our mood and overall functioning, which can then help combat our mental health symptoms. Notice that I said health, okay? It's not a cure-all. And also setting weight loss and health and fitness goals are also part of behavioral activation because... They create this like upward spiral of motivation and energy because of the pleasure and mastery that we experience when we meet our goals, which is why I always suggest having both long and short term goals and ones that are not just related to the number on the scale. For instance, I get a little jolt of pleasure and happiness every single day when I check off all of my daily goals on my little daily o habit tracker. That is a type of behavioral activation. It's a sense of accomplishment and pleasure. And those types of feelings tend to be 
cumulative and build up over time and start to serve as a type of buffer between you and those negative thoughts and emotions that may come up from whatever mental health diagnosis you are struggling with. Weight loss can also be beneficial when it comes to cognitive restructuring, which just means that you're changing and or challenging thoughts because we all know that getting stuck in negative thought patterns is like a given on any weight loss or weight gain journey ever. And if you are using skills in order to change and challenge the negative thought patterns that you are having in terms of weight loss, then that practice can then help you with changing and challenging cognitive distortions related to things such as depression, anxiety, etc. Speaking of which, if you're interested in me doing a few videos on things like um, cognitive distortions and cognitive restructuring and cognitive coping, like this video and comment down below and let me know. So the point that I am trying to make with all this perhaps poorly, is that the activities that you inevitably engage in in order to meet your weight loss or health and fitness goals, if they are physically and mentally healthy and sustainable, I ain't talking about things like crash dieting and excessive exercising and whatever else, can actually serve as coping mechanisms and mood boosting or goal directed behaviors that help to buffer against mental health symptoms. And considering that most therapists and mental health agencies, or at least the ones that I know of, are trying to look at mental health from a more holistic viewpoint nowadays, it's likely that addressing health concerns may be something that your therapist addresses with you from the onset of therapy, because our physical and mental health are entwined. If we're doing well physically, we tend to be doing better mentally and vice versa. All that said, if you find that you are becoming obsessive about your weight loss, such as counting every single calorie and individual morsel that you put into your mouth or spending five hours a day at the gym or weighing in 10 times a day, then those things may begin to exacerbate your mental health symptoms and it may be a good idea to take a step back and focus on mental health first, at least for a little while. And I would definitely focus more on building and practicing cognitive coping skills if that were the case, because this may just be my experience, but it seems like those types of behaviors usually tend to be the result of getting stuck in negative thought patterns, such as all or nothing thinking. So once you have some cognitive coping skills that work well to help you cope with and challenge those types of negative thought patterns, i.e. cognitive distortions, then I say ease right back on to the weight loss saddle. Giddy up rawhide. What? <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> and you like how I'm even doing like a little Harry Potter, <laughs> like Wingardium Leviosa. <laughs> Ugh, it's been a hell of a day. <laughs> Actually, that probably came from watching Oklahoma last night and the first Harry Potter movie last weekend. So yeah. All right, warriors. So to wrap it all up, should you table your weight loss efforts in order to focus on mental health first? I will say it again. It depends. It depends on your diagnosis. It depends on how severe your symptoms are and how much they are affecting your mood and level of functioning, all of those things. But that being said, if you are approaching weight loss in a healthy and sustainable manner, you're not doing any of the crash dieting, excessive exercising, obsessing over every single little calorie or any of those things that can exacerbate your mental health symptoms, then the things that you are doing in order to lose weight and meet your health and fitness goals can actually help your mental health symptoms improve because they can be a source of behavioral activation and even cognitive restructuring. But again, that is only if you are approaching weight loss in a mentally, emotionally, and physically 
healthy way. All right, warriors, that is it for today's video. I hope you found this content to be useful and helpful to you on your own health and weight loss journeys. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other suggestions for things that are like mental health and weight loss related. Um, if you have any other questions that are related to this topic, I'd love to hear from you guys. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, let me know by subscribing and giving it two thumbs way, way up. And make sure to tap on that notification bell so you can join me next time. Bye, everyone. Mm -hmm.